to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes, this is my beautiful girlfriend Kat, and today you join us from the cockpit of Maud, my Maud or Mark II Escort. I get so many questions from you guys asking for advice about your car builds, and although I'm not an expert, I'm always happy to help if I can. Most of the questions I get are in some way, shape or form to do with putting a ZTEC engine into your classic Ford. Now obviously both of my Escorts are running ZTECs, so I've got a little bit of experience on the conversion and today I thought it'd be a good idea to go down to my other garage where Esther, my ST170 powered Mark 1 Escort is, put both cars next to each other and just explain in detail how I've gone about the conversions. What parts I've used, what companies I've used, what companies I feel that you shouldn't use and hopefully that will answer a lot of your questions. Before we do go down to the other garage though, Maud is in desperate need of a bath, so I'm going to put her through the car wash. Yeah, this car wash is weird. It's sort of, you put your wheel onto this track and it drags you along. How many panels are going to fall off? Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so weird. <laughs> One thing I've noticed about this car recently is that the diff isn't locking up properly anymore, which means it's going to need another set of clutch plates. You may have noticed when I came out of the breakfast meet in the last video, the car didn't slide properly. And yeah, it's basically doing a one wheel peel. The thing with the clutch plates in the diff, they actually wear when you're driving the car normally. If you was to just drift everywhere, then the clutch plates would last a bit longer. Despite what some of you may think, I don't drift everywhere, only in Mexico. Right, so we've made it to the garage and I've got Maud and Esther lined up next to each other. I've also got Maud's new ST170 engine out of the garage. It's worth noting that the car wash done a pretty good job on Maud and none of the panels or any of the stickers have fallen off, which is always a good sign. So to recap, the ZTEC engine in Maud, although it's got a silver top rocker cover, it's actually an early black top out of an automatic Mondeo and the ST170 engine in Esther is from a 2004 Mark I Focus ST170. And Maud's new engine, obviously, is also out of an ST170 Mark I Focus. One thing to mention, if you are gonna be taking a ZTEC out of an auto, like I did with Maud's engine, as well as the obvious stuff, like fitting a flywheel and a clutch from a manual car, you will also need to change this bracket which is where the crank sensor goes. Now the crank sensors are the same on the autos, but this bracket is different. So if you are fitting an engine from an auto, you'll need to get that bracket from a manual. Now to fit a ZTEC or an ST170, which although they're badged as a Duratec, they are essentially a ZTEC into a real drive escort like this, you're gonna need to change the engine mounts, the water rail and the sump. Now, both of my cars are actually running engine mounts from Retro Ford, and it's hard to see them, but basically you've got the metal bit that bolts to the block, and then there's a rubber piece that screws into it, and in between the metal bit and the rubber bit, I've got these cups. And the job of the cups, apart from looking cool, is to give the engine mount rubbers a bit of rigidity and stop them moving around as much as they otherwise would. It's worth noting, though, that the Retro Ford engine mount rubbers are a little bit stiffer than the normal Ford ones that you would get on a set of Pinto mounts. Now the water rails in my cars, on Maud, I've got a water rail from Neil Dunn. And the bad thing about these water rails is that the thermostat can't really be changed without 
removing the engine or at least lowering it down. Whereas the water rail on Esther's setup, which I actually got with this engine, I'm not sure who produced it. The thermostat is here and the water rail is in two pieces. So if you did need to change the thermostat, all you need to do is undo these bolts and you can remove this pipe section of the water rail and you're able to change the thermostat a lot easier. Now, if I was to replace the water rail that's fitted to Maud, I personally would get one from Retro Ford. They're quite expensive, but they are very similar to the design of this one where you can change the thermostat a lot easier. Now with this water rail, I actually had to get this part at the back here tapped to accept the sender for the temperature gauge. And although it was tapped here, I had to actually get an adapter made up so that the adapter could screw into the water rail and then this sensor, which is for the ECU, was able to screw into it. It did come with this port here tapped as well, which I assume is for the fan switch for your radiator. But on Esther's setup, I've actually got the fan switch in the radiator itself. And the retro Ford water rails actually already come tapped with all the ports that you'll need. You know, whether you're running an injection setup like this and you need the sensor for the ECU or whether you just need the fan switch and the coolant gauge sender. On the Neil Dunn water rail that's fitted to Maud, it has also been tapped for the coolant gauge sender and for the fan switch. In fact, when I got this water rail, I actually had a fan switch controller, which is this thing here, although it's not wired up anymore. And I only had it tapped for the coolant sender. And then I got Zach at Sue Speed to add this port for the radiator fan switch. So the next thing I want to talk about is the sump. Both of my cars are currently fitted with sumps from Neil Dunn, which in my opinion are no good. They don't really fit very well and both of mine are leaking oil. Now the Neil Dunn sump that I've got fitted to Esther fits a bit better than the one that's fitted to Maud, even though apparently they're made on a jig. On Maud, I've actually had to cut out the cross member. I've also had to put spacers between the cross member and the chassis to bring everything down. And then I've had to space the engine up using washers in between the mount and the cross member to bring the engine up away from the cross member, which then has given me enough clearance between the sump and the steering rack. On Esther's setup, I didn't need to cut the cross member and I didn't need to space the engine up away from the steering rack either, but I have put spacers between the cross member and the chassis just to bring everything down so that the water rail here wasn't hitting on the lip. Now, according to the internet, no one else ever has any problems with Neil Dunn sumps but loads of people have been in touch with me to tell me that they've had problems with them. And I've actually experienced how he likes to threaten you with court action for going public with your problems. So yeah, I understand why it's quite hard to find any evidence online of any problems with his stuff. But yeah, I personally wouldn't buy anything from him again. Going back to the cooling side of things, on Esther's setup, the coolant hoses I've used are a silicone hose kit from Retro Ford, which are quite expensive, but they're really high quality. Because I'm not using a Retro Ford water rail, I did have to have Zach at Zoo Speed weld on a wider bit of pipe, just so that this hose is nice and tight on here. And also, because my radiator is basically a direct copy of a Mark 1 Escort RS2000 radiator, which had a straight union at the bottom, Zach also turned that into a right angle so that the Retro Ford hose would fit onto there. These coolant hoses are designed to be used with the Retro Ford water rail, but also with the Retro Ford radiator, which does have a right angled port on the bottom of the radiator. On Maud's setup, I've gone for a bit more of a budget option, which actually utilizes some hoses from a Volvo and a Land Rover. I've printed these out to show you. Now, the top radiator hose is a top radiator hose from a Volvo 850, S70, or a V70 up to the year 2000. The bend of it wasn't ideal, but because I have this fan controller here, I was able to sort of cut the hose in the middle at a funny angle and then put this in, which basically made the bend correct. And where it meets the radiator, underneath here, I've got another bit of hose, which is basically acting as a reducer because this Volvo hose is a bit wide to fit onto the radiator. Now for the bottom radiator hose, I've used a top radiator hose from a Land Rover Freelander. It's the K series models with the KV6 from 1997 to 2006. And I've had to do some modifications to that hose to make it fit. So it comes with this sort of T piece here, which is down there, but I had to cut 
this hose here a bit shorter and that is this hose here that goes into the bottom radiator port also this part of the hose here which is straight um you know it's it's bent in this picture but yeah i had to cut a piece out of it because again that would have been far too long and i added a hose joiner here to connect the pieces back up and yeah this end here goes into the ZTEC water pump there. Now the other hose that's coming off of this T-piece, I've actually got going to my heater and that goes around there and into the ports for the heater at the bulkhead. And then I've got another sort of 90 degree bit of hose coming out of the other port from the heater going into the back of the Neil Dunn water rail. Yeah, so it's a bit of messing around and obviously, you know, by the time you buy your Jubilee clips and you buy your hose joiners, it still adds up to a few quid, but it's still, works out a lot cheaper than the retro Ford kit. But I will say with the retro Ford kit, you end up with nice silicone hoses rather than rubber ones. But yeah, with Maud, I was just trying to save money wherever I can, because it is a budget build. And I've told quite a few people about this budget setup in the past, and everyone I have told about it has managed to make it work just like I have. Right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the alternator brackets. Both of my escorts are running alternator bracket kits from Retro Ford. On Esta, I have their Motorsport kit, which utilizes this lightweight Nippon Denso alternator. And on Maud, I've got their sort of normal setup, which uses a normal type alternator. One of the main reasons I went with this kit on Esta is because on the non-motorsport kit, the bracket actually bolts to this front cover, which is also the engine mount when the ZTEX are mounted in the front wheel drive cars. And the ST170 front cover is slightly different. So the non-motorsport kit needs to bolt to this bolt here, which would mean you'd need to sort of shave some of this cover off to make it work. Whereas with the motorsport kit, everything's bolted down there. Now I think Retro Ford have actually updated their kits so that both kits fit an ST170 and a ZTEC. But with Maud getting an ST170 engine soon, I am gonna be reusing this non-motorsport kit. So what I've done is I've fitted this normal ZTEC front cover to this ST170 engine, and yeah, it fits on there fine, and it will mean that Maud's alternator kit can bolt onto this exactly the same way that it currently bolts onto a two litre ZTEC. Now both retro Ford kits come with this idler pulley and you basically run the water pump on the back of the belt. Another way you can do it is you can change the impeller inside the water pump if you don't want to run this idler pulley, but yeah, it works fine with the idler pulley and the kit obviously comes with the belt as well. Same thing over here, We've got the idler pulley and the bracket here and yeah, water pump runs on the back of the belt. Now, when I first put Maud together, I did try an alternator bracket kit from a company called Tiger Motorsport, and one of the brackets for that kit bolted to here, and I found that that bracket would always break. I had to get my mate Nathan to weld it up about three times, and then I decided that I was gonna go for a retro Ford kit instead, and this one has been absolutely fine. So yeah, in my opinion, you're better off going straight to retro Ford for an alternator kit. Again, they're not cheap, but you know, the retro Ford stuff is really high quality. Now, one thing loads of people keep asking me is about the clutch when you're running the ZTEC conversion. Both of my escorts are running Pinto clutches, and to run a Pinto clutch, you basically need a flywheel that has either been made or re-drilled to accept a Pinto clutch. In Maud, I currently have an 1800 ZTEC flywheel, which are slightly lighter than the two litre ones, which has been re-drilled for a Pinto clutch, and she's running a Pinto clutch from Turbo Sport. And in Esther, I have a light flywheel from Turbo Sport, and she is actually running an AP racing clutch, which was what was fitted to the car when she had a Pinto. Now, I did used to have a light flywheel fitted to Maud setup from IK Engineering, and I've actually got that flywheel over here. Now, what I found was that the starter motor didn't engage with the ring gear properly. I have now changed the ring gear for a ring gear from a normal 1800 ZTEC flywheel, and this one definitely pokes out further than the IK Engineering one did, so I'm hoping that I will now be able to use this IK Engineering light flywheel on Maud's new engine. Another thing to note though with the IK Engineering flywheel is that the crank sensor actually rubs on the flywheel. So when it's fitted to the car, this sensor basically pokes out and it picks up on these divots that are in the flywheel and I found that it was rubbing on there. So what I did and what I intend to do when I fit this engine is I spaced the crank sensor with these little copper washers. You know, that pokes through there and this screw holds the sensor on. And yeah, basically, I'm just gonna have this washer on here and then I've got these two little thinner washers that I'm gonna put on the bolt itself. And yeah, that'll basically bring the crank sensor away slightly 
so that it won't rub on the flywheel here. See, I'm hoping to make that flywheel work, but if I was to buy another light flywheel, I will go straight to Turbo Sport and get the same flywheel that I've already got fitted to Esther. And the Turbo Sport one is actually a bit lighter than the IK Engineering one as well. In terms of starter motors, the Turbo Sport flywheel is designed to use the same starter motor that you would use with a standard ZTEC flywheel. And that one is an LRS 707 starter motor. Retro Ford do sell them as well. The IK Engineering flywheel, however, has actually been designed to use a Pinto starter motor. And it is possible to use a Pinto starter motor with the Turbo Sport flywheel or with a standard ZTEC flywheel if you space the starter motor away by about 14 millimeters, I think it is. And up until recently, I was actually running a Pinto starter motor on mod setup with the spacer, but that starter motor failed. And now she's actually been fitted with the LRS 707 one, which was fitted to Esther. And I still need to replace Esther's starter motor, but I'm not gonna rush out and get one yet, because as I say, when Maud gets her new engine, I'm gonna need a Pinto starter motor. So when the time comes, I can buy a new Pinto starter motor for Maud's new engine, and then Esther can get her starter motor back off of Maud. Right, I'm gonna talk about exhaust systems now. On Maud, I have an Ashley exhaust manifold and system fitted. It's just a mild steel one, they're quite cheap. But to be honest, the problem with these is that they end up hitting the passenger side floor. Now, some people will cut the manifold where it goes down and add a piece of tube to it just to make it longer. But the way I've done it is basically I've just taken a hammer to the passenger side floor. It doesn't fit great at the back here either. You know, it hangs quite low and rubs on the speed bumps and stuff. But as I say, it is quite a cheap system, so you get what you pay for. On Esther's setup, I threw a bit more money at the exhaust and I've actually got a stainless manifold and system from Piper. Now, I really like this system. I love the way that the exhaust fits. And one thing that's great is that where the manifold meets the midsection, it's actually on the part of the manifold that's facing down. And then you've got the clamp round this way. Whereas Maud's manifold comes down and then the midsection meets here. On Esther's setup, the manifold comes down and then the midsection meets around here and then it's got you know a 90 degree sort of bend in it so you can undo the clamp pull that bit down a bit and then clamp it back up and then that gives you a bit of adjustment in terms of the height of the system and you can basically choose how tight you've got it to the passenger side floor yeah as you can see it's nice and tightly tucked up i have got some heat shield there but yeah you don't need to bent the floor in to make it fit so yeah the piper system is really expensive and i'd love to be able to afford to get one for Maud one day as well but we'll have to see now obviously with Maud being a carb setup you don't need any fancy ecu but with a ztec you do need some sort of ecu to control the spark and on Maud, i've got this nodis pro module which basically controls the spark and it's fully mappable as well it also has a rev limiter on it and you've got a launch control function as well, which I've just got wired up to a switch on the dash, but you could wire it up to a clutch switch. Now I don't have a throttle position sensor fitted, but the Nodis Pro is capable of being wired up to one of those as well. And you can actually wire it up to a coolant sensor similar to what I've got on Esther, so that you can adjust the ignition advance depending on how warm the engine is. But yeah, on board, I've got it set up in what's known as 2D mode, and it runs fine, and yeah, it made really good power. And while we're talking about Maud's carb setup, I am actually running a 3236 DGV carburetor. It has been converted so that the throttle flaps are synchronized rather than progressive, which is how these carbs would have been originally. And the inlet manifold I've used is this auto speed inlet manifold. And I'm pretty sure that one of the main reasons that I've got so much power in Maud's setup is because of that inlet manifold. And I've actually recently been talking to the guy that actually designed that inlet manifold for auto speed and he said that loads of development went into it to make sure that it was really good flowing and that it makes good power and it's actually stamped with ssca and brisker around the other side and i think they refer to some sort of stock car racing series because that is the official inlet manifold of those racing series and it's worth noting as well the guy that actually designed that inlet manifold has also got a real wheel drive ZTEC sump coming out soon, which I did want to mention earlier in the video. It's a cast alloy sump, and I believe that a ZTEC is better off with a cast alloy sump rather than the steel ones, like the Neil Dunn ones that I've got fitted. As you can see from this standard ZTEC sump, the top half is 
you know, cast alloy. And I've been told that the engine blocks of these ETEX, which are cast iron, aren't as rigid as, you know, some of the old school engines like Pintos and Crossflows. And they basically do need this big lump of cast alley to keep the block nice and rigid. So that might actually be one of the reasons why I'm having problems with the steel sumps leaking. The original ones have this big lump of cast alloy and they just have a little steel pan at the bottom, whereas the real drive sumps bolt up to here, so you do away with this. Now that guy's sump should be coming to the market soon and based on the measurements that he gave me, it does look really promising. When I was under Esther and I was taking measurements, it seems like that guy's sump would fit a lot better than the one that's currently fitted to Esther. And as I say, the Neil Dunn sump that's fitted to Esther does seem to fit a bit better than the one that's fitted to Maud. And that new sump that's coming out soon is also been designed to use a genuine Ford gasket, which should definitely stop it leaking. Whereas the Neil Dunn sumps are using a cork gasket, which is a very dated idea. <laughs> Anyway, onto the fuel inside of things of Esther setup. Now she's running fuel injection and she's running these Gen V individual throttle bodies and they're hanging on a custom inlet manifold that was made by Dan ST Engineering and he also made these trumpets for me as well. And on Maud's new ST170 engine, I've also got an inlet manifold made by Dan ST Engineering to suit the CBR900 carbs that were donated to me by Johnny Bamba. And it's worth noting that the inlet ports on an ST170 engine are slightly different than a two litres E-Tech. And yeah, I always advise anyone who needs a custom inlet manifold to go straight to Dan ST Engineering because his stuff is really good. Now, obviously with Esther being a fuel injection setup, she needs a little bit more of a clever ECU to run things. And I've gone with this ME221 ECU from my friends at Motorsport Electronics. Now, not only does the ME221 run the spark and the fuel it's packed full of features you know you've got your launch control you've got your rev limiter you've got loads of other features that i know nothing about and the one thing that i think is really good about the me221 is it's able to run the variable valve timing on an st170 correctly now this is the variable valve timing solenoid here and as you can see i've got the plug and play loom for the me221 plugged into it and with the me221 you can fully map the vvt how you want it some people will run the VVT off of their shift light output, but that's not the correct way to do it. When you have it set up that way, you're basically telling it to come fully on or fully off at a set revs. Whereas what you're supposed to do is ease the VVT in and then at the top of the rev range, it's actually supposed to back off a bit. And with the ME221 ECU, like I say, you're able to map it exactly how you need it. Now, some people do get rid of the VVT completely and that means that you need to replace this VVT pulley with one of the VVT delete kits. And I've heard those kits are quite expensive. And in my opinion, if you're gonna do that, you might as well just go with a normal ZTEC rather than an ST170. With Maud's new ST170 engine, I am still gonna be running the VVT, but because that's gonna be a carb setup, I don't need an ME221 ECU. But what I have purchased is an ME100 ECU, which is basically the same as an ME221, but without the fuel side of things. And the great thing about the ME100 is that if I did ever go injection with Maud's new engine later on, I can simply pay a small fee and Motorsport Electronics can upgrade the ME100 so that it basically becomes an ME221. So I think that is pretty much all there is to say about the ZTEC conversions in both of my Escorts. One thing I've just thought of though, on Esther's ST170 engine, and on the ST170 engine that I'm gonna be fitting to Maud soon, I have fitted these Turbo Sport adjustable vernier pulleys on the exhaust cam. And what they enable you to do is to retard the exhaust cam slightly, which can give you a little bit more power. And on Esther's setup, I think we picked up about six horsepower extra. And as you can see, it's been retarded. Now I've just noticed Chris actually advanced the exhaust cam on the dyno. Yeah, I thought most people retarded the exhaust cam to get a bit more power, but yeah, it seems like Chris actually advanced mine. Maybe that means there is some more power to come from Esther's setup, but yeah, I'll worry about that another day. But yeah, with the vernier pulley on your exhaust cam, it gives you a little bit more adjustability in terms of the power band of the engine. And yeah, I think that is pretty much it. So as I always say, I'm no expert and there's loads of other ways you can go about doing your ZTEC conversions, but this is just the way that I've done it. If there is anything I've forgot, you know, put it in the comments or just send me a message through Facebook or Instagram and I'll happily help you out if I can. And fingers crossed, the guy who is bringing out those cast alloy rear wheel drive ZTEC sumps brings them out soon so we can get this ST170 in Maud's Bay where it belongs.
Right, so I hope this video has answered some of your questions with regards to the ZTEC conversions in both of my escorts. If I have missed anything out, do let me know. And speaking of questions, the next video is gonna be the Q&A. So massive thanks to everyone who posted your questions for that. If you thought this video was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you wanna keep up to date with all my future uploads and check the links in the description to my social media and my website. I'll also leave my email address down there for anyone who wants to contact me. But other than that, until next time, from me and Kat, thanks for watching.